Just when I thought I couldn't possibly drag any more crap out into the woods, I walk by the back of our GX and I notice a square tubey looking thingy. Hmm. We've already maxed up the cabin, loaded up the roof taller than a hobo's grocery cart. Maybe we should see how much crap we can drag behind a GX. In this video, we'll cover everything that you need to know about towing with a Lexus GX460. We'll go over the specs, we'll take a look at the hitch and brake controller options, and we'll bring you along as we rent a 5,000 pound travel trailer and drag it up to Sedona for a week of beer drinking and family fun. Hook up your safety chains, test out the taillights. It's time to try out trailer camping. All right guys, I've wanted to test out the towing capabilities of our GX460 for a while now. All my buddies have those super cool Aussie Outback trailers and my kids have been less and less enthusiastic about pooping over a hole in the ground while they try not to shiver so hard that it makes a foot slip in. It only happens like once a summer, whiners. We really wanted to try out an off-road trailer, but we couldn't find any to rent in the Phoenix market. We also had a week long trip planned with my parents to one of our favorite campgrounds. So we decided that it was a great time to rent a travel trailer and see how we liked it. To get started, we had to figure out what the GX460 is capable of towing and what we needed in order to tow safely. I didn't want to get a trailer that was too big that might put my family's safety in jeopardy. That's my job when we're on vacation. The manual states that our GX has a respectable 6,500 pound towing capacity. It also says that towing will screw up your braking, handling, fuel consumption, durability, and general good manners of the truck. It's almost like they don't want you to tow with it. The manual also says that the tongue weight should be limited to about 10% of the total trailer weight and that you'll need a weight distributing hitch if you're pulling over 5,000 pounds or a sway control device over 2,000 pounds. All right, let's go pick a trailer. It seems that there are two major RV rental sites, RV Share and Outdoorsy. We went with Outdoorsy mostly because it had the trailer we wanted and because the name sounded cozier. Also, RV Share sounds like a wife swapping website. We picked a mini Winnie because it had bunk beds and this cute little hobbit door that we could use for passing beer through so we didn't have to walk around the trailer. The trailer itself was 4,600 pounds dry. Since we were planning on adding some water and letting the owner dump it, we also had to factor in another couple hundred pounds of <coughs> porta potty weight. Add in the generator that we rented and every stitch of Amazon camping crap I own jammed into all its nooks and crannies and this guy was probably tipping the scale at 5,500 to 6,000 pounds. Now that's safely within the GX's 6,500 pound towing limit, but plenty to test its metal, dragging three tons of fun all the way up to Oak Creek Canyon. Once I locked in the trailer rental, I asked the owner a few questions and he mentioned that I would probably need something called a brake controller to keep the trailer from crushing my family to death at the bottom of the first slight hill we took it down. Now I don't know anything about trailers, but apparently the big ones have their own brakes and they're not smart enough to engage themselves. There are a ton of brake controllers on the market and they range in cost from anywhere from 50 bucks to about 400. We went with the Red Arc Tow Pro Elite for about 250 bucks. The Red Arc Tow Pro line comes with this nifty little dial for the dash and that allows you to hide away the box wherever you want it. I went with the Elite version because it has some of the off-road features that might come in handy for that off-road trailer that I'll probably never buy. If you don't plan on towing off-road, I'd save yourself a few bucks and just get the standard version. We purchased ours with Red Arc's Toyota kit, which included a Toyota matched harness connector and a mounting bracket. I installed mine under the dash. I just removed a few panels, bolted it here using the adapter plate that was included. Then all I had to do was route the wires to the dial on the dash and connect the main harness with the Toyota adapter to the brake controller connector, which is tucked up underneath the e-brake. Once I installed it, I went over to the trailer owner's house and he let me pull it around the block a couple times to make sure that the brake controller worked. It turned out that the guy had an anti-sway hitch, so I didn't have to buy or rent one of those somewhere else. When the big day came, I went over and got the trailer. When I did my walk around, I noticed that this thing was kind of banged up. This was a 2022 Winnebago that we were renting in October of 2022. So you might want to keep that in mind if you're thinking about jumping into the RV rental game. This thing was definitely broken in. The drive from our house in Phoenix to our campground in Oak Creek Canyon, north of Sedona, is about 150 miles and gains 4,500 feet in elevation. 
You know how you always hear guys with big trucks that tow stuff say things like, I couldn't even feel it back there. Or, I think I forgot I was towing for a second, it was so light. That was not my experience. This is the steepest hill I've ever been on. And I'm getting instant fuel consumption of 3.7 miles per gallon. I'm flooring it. 3,500 RPMs and doing 55 miles an hour. Fl like, floored, like. Now I reset the mileage minder as we left and as we cruised out of town, I noticed that we pretty much never dropped below 3,000 RPMs unless we were idling at a stoplight. Once we hit the freeway, it had to maintain about 4,500 RPMs to hold 65 miles per hour on an ever so gradual incline. The fuel consumption was awful. And of course I timed this trip perfectly to coincide with another Putin hissy fit, so here's what it cost me to drag this box full of crap approximately 110 miles from my house. Now I had filled up shortly before picking the trailer up, and my truck is well maintained, I assure you. But we did let it idle for about 20 to 30 minutes, and there was about a 20 mile drive to get the trailer. But yes, for all you doing the math, dragging three tons of fun up a hill costs you somewhere close to a dollar per mile. The rest of the drive was pretty easy. The brake controller worked great. I generally kept it around three out of 10 and just turned it up a degree or two when we were on the downhills. The 37 Sedona roundabouts were actually pretty easy to navigate and Oak Creek Canyon was narrow, but fairly easy to pull the trailer through. The camping trip itself was fine. We had a pretty woefully underpowered trailer, so we had to run the generator way too much. Coming back down the hill was a bit easier than going up. I never really felt like the GX was underpowered on the way down and the brake controller worked out great. The trip average gas consumption was 9.3 miles per gallon, which really isn't that bad, I guess, considering that the trailer was around 5,500 pounds and we were changing elevation all the time. I think what we really realize is that we're just not trailer people, not yet anyway. I feel like I spent way too much time worrying about and managing the box and the small amount of increased comfort and warmth that it provided wasn't really worth all of the trouble. I'd rather throw a sleeping bag on the ground and teach my kids to do the same. Would I tow anything bigger than this with a GX? No, not much anyway. I think that this was a pretty comfortable experience, but I definitely wouldn't push past the factory limits no matter what sort of suspension upgrade or tranny cooler that you run in. So that's about it. The GX did great at towing. We realized that we didn't really want to tow anything after all anyway. Rocks were hopped, beer was drank, good times were had by all. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, and share for more half crapped camping and GX-ring content like this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.